the constructions that we did in the previous lecture. with vector spaces. Can be carried out for vector bundles. So uh, let e or e to x and f to x be two vector bundles. We may assume that uh, there is an index set I and a covering an open cover of X by open sets UI such that both E restricted to UI and F restricted to UI are trivial and E is obtained using gluing maps phi ij from uij to glnr and f using psi ij's from uij to glmr so then the trans so for example then the transition maps for E direct sum F is simply phi ij and psi ij here, zero, zero. There's n and this is m. So uh, we can define e, e direct sum f using these transition maps. So uh, so let's call this uh, delta ij. So delta ij is a map from uij to gl m plus nr and clearly it satisfies the co-cycle condition. So in the same way, we want to define E tensor F. So before that, so let let us take vector spaces.
v and w of dimension n and m so we write odd v equal to glnr and odd w glmr so suppose if suppose we are given an element phi in odd v and psi in odd w then one easily checks checks that we get an element phi tensor psi inside odd v tensor w so for example so uh, construct this using the universal property I leave this as an exercise of tensor products so uh, in fact in fact phi tensor psi on pure tensors v tensor w is going to be by definition phi of v tensor psi of w if we choose a basis e alpha for v and e and f beta for w for w then we may write So, uh, okay, before this, so suppose okay, now let's get back to the vector bundle situation. So, uh, come back to the to the vector bundle situation. with phi ij's from uij to glnr and psi ij from uij to glmr so if it so we so The identification, I suppose, ought let E alpha be a basis for V, which gives, which identifies. Ought V. With GLNR. 
and f beta be a basis for w which identifies or w with glmr then then we get uh, we get this map psi ij sorry phi ij tensor psi ij from uij to gl mnr so okay so first it goes to odd v tensor w but this is identified with gl mn comma r uh, by choosing the basis e alpha tensor f beta for v tensor w So uh, one easily checks. So so let's say we are given a basis element. So uh, phi i j psi i j of e alpha tensor f beta. I can write it as some summation g alpha beta comma alpha prime beta prime e alpha prime tensor f beta prime and we want to show not we want to show and we And we can check easily. In fact, let's just do the check. So what is this equal to? This is equal to phi ij tensor, sorry. So let's say I'm evaluating it just at the point x applied on the vector e alpha tensor f beta that is going to be equal to phi i j x applied on e alpha this vector tensored with psi i j x applied on f beta but now uh, my phi ijx applied on e alpha that is equal to summation over alpha prime uh, phi ijx the alpha alpha prime -th coordinate of that times e alpha prime tensored with the same thing beta prime psi ij x the beta beta prime with coordinate f beta prime so from this so when i write it as summation alpha prime comma beta prime some g alpha beta alpha prime beta prime E alpha prime tensor F beta prime. So this shows that, so it is clear. G alpha beta 
comma alpha prime beta prime is of the type phi ij x the alpha alpha primeth coordinate of that multiplied with psi ij x the beta beta prime coordinate of that so this means that since phi ij and psi ij are smooth Uh, phi ij tensor psi ij is also smooth <clears throat> so we claim that <coughs> next we claim that phi ij tensor psi ij satisfy the co-cycle condition for this we need to check that if x is in ui intersection uj intersection uk then phi jk tensor psi jk applied on x compose phi ij tensor psi ij applied on x is equal to phi i k tensor psi i k applied on x and uh, once again this is easily checked by applying it on a tensor of the type P tensor W. So this defines a smooth vector bundle which we denote E tensor F. Uh, in particular, we can do this for finitely many bundles E1 to X, E2 to X, ER to X to get. E1 tensor E2 tensor ER to X and by taking all the EIs to be equal to E we get a bundle E tensor R So let's denote the transition functions. So, uh, so suppose uh, the transition functions. Okay, so now let's suppose so uh, let phi i j from u i j to ot v be the transition function for E then the transition function
for e tensor r e tensor with itself r times is so we will denote it by phi ij tensor r this from u i j to odd of v. v tensor with itself r times so we have to do notice a make a trivial observation here so uh phi ij tensor r at the point x takes i r v to itself so recall that uh recall that i r v is uh the elements in degree r of i of v which was a subset which was the ideal inside the tensor algebra of v and i of v was defined by which is defined to be the two sided ideal generated by uh, elements of the form V tensor W minus W tensor V. So, uh, yeah, so it is clear that phi ij tensor R x. Uh, takes i r of v to itself so thus so if we are in the following situation uh, we have two vector spaces P contained in A are vector spaces let P A comma B be P the space of linear maps from A to A linear isomorphisms from A to A A to A which take B to B so thus if we choose a basis for B and extend to a basis for A then the matrix will be a block matrix so uh,
So there is a group homomorphism. P of A comma B to out of A mod B. And uh, if so, uh, if we uh, if if we choose as uh, so, let's say we had taken a basis b one, b two up to b m for b, and then a1 up to as, this is a basis for a, this is a basis for b, and this whole thing is a basis for a. So if you choose as basis for a mod b, the images a1 bar up to as bar, uh, then this map It's just a projection. To the to the lower so this will go to this. And we just clearly smooth. So uh, let us denote. So we have these maps phi i j tensor r. So the conclusion of the earlier discussion is that the image of the map, since phi i j tensor r, it preserves i r v. The image actually lands inside p of v tensor r, comma i r. And from here we have this map to P of V tensor R mod IRV to odd of sorry V tensor R mod IRV which is equal to odd of so this is what we called SRV the RH symmetric product of V And uh, since phi i j tensor r satisfy the co-cycle condition, uh, phi i j tensor r bar, so let's call the composite map u i j to odd SRV phi j tensor R bar also satisfy the co-cycle condition. Simply because map P A B to odd A mod B is a group homomorphism. So thus, we get a bundle, which is the RH symmetric product of E.
and similarly so similarly we can check or it's equally trivial that phi i j tensor r preserves j r v so once again this was uh, j r v is the degree r degree r component of j v which is an ideal inside the tensor, tensor algebra of v uh, generated by elements of the type v tensor w plus w tensor v and when we repeat this construction we get a bundle which we call the rth exterior of v so this brings us to the end of the construction of the symmetric symmetric powers of a bundle E and the exterior powers of a bundle E. Okay, so now let's go on. So uh, suppose, notice that if E is a vector bundle, And suppose E E is trivial over the open set U. Set U. So let's say there's a vector space uh, W and a trivialization over U. So uh, then E restricted to U, the R tensor po power is just U cross the tensor power, the R symmetric power of E restricted to U is just is isomorphic to SRW and the R exterior of E restricted to U is isomorphic to exterior R of W. Okay, so we will apply these constructions So, um, yeah, we will apply these constructions. Do the bundle. E equal to the, co the cotangent model where x is a smooth manifold. <laughs> so let us fix some notations.
which we will use later. Uh, let u x1 up to xn be a coordinate neighborhood then the bundle omega restricted to u is trivial as we have seen many times now So every section, so section is of the type S is equal to summation F T X I fi txi where fi so this is a smooth section is from u from u to r is a smooth function so the bundle uh, the bundle the rth exterior of omega has the following description over u let i contained in 1 through n be a subset of cardinality or write txi to be to mean txi1 which dxi2 which up to dxir where i1 i is equal to i1 let's say they are distinct i2 ir then the sections S sub i this is defined to be dxi at p gives a trivialization for exterior r omega over u. Thus a section of exterior r omega restricted to u so any section is all form form s is equal to summation cardinality of i is equal to r f sub i for some smooth function times dxi where f sub i u to r is a smooth function So next we want to define want to talk 
of the sheaf of sections. Sections of a vector bundle. So we will define what are sheaves. So let X be a topological space. A sheaf S of abelian groups. Uh, associates to each open set U of X, an abelian group, S of U, such that the following happens. So S of the empty set is zero. Uh, if V, then we have uh, restriction maps the restriction from u to v. So there is a map from s of u to s of v. And such that if w contained in v contained in u are open, then We look at the composite so this should be equal to r u w so in other words r v w compose r u v is equal to r u w Third condition is suppose let X have an open covering by UIs. Let U contained in X be any open set. And suppose F is in S of U is such that for all I, the restriction from U to U intersection UI of F, which is in S of UI intersection U is zero. Then F is zero. And the last condition is that suppose we are given Fi's in S of UI intersection U such that the restrictions from UI intersection U to U i intersection U j intersection U of F i is equal to the restriction of U j intersection U to U i intersection U j intersection U of F j. So in words, this means that the restriction of F i to U i intersection U j intersection U is equal to the restriction of F j to ui intersection uj intersection u then there is 
f in s of u such that fi is equal to restriction of restriction from u to u intersection u of f so this really modeled over uh, okay just one more remark such an f is forced to be unique because of condition condition 3 the previous condition so the main example that one should keep in mind is the sheaf of continuous functions on a topological space so uh, one has the sheaf of continuous functions on a topological space space with the restriction maps being the usual restriction maps similarly similarly one has the sheaf of smooth functions on a smooth manifold with the restriction maps once again being the usual restriction maps <laughs> and one can have more examples like similarly one has the sheaf of holomorphic functions on a complex manifold and the restriction maps are once again the usual restriction maps okay So uh, let's just make a definition which we'll not use immediately, but maybe we'll use it later. So uh, suppose S is a sheaf of rings on X. So what this means is that that each open set S of U is a ring and the restriction maps are ring homomorphisms. For example, all the three examples, three examples above are sheaves of rings.
So given a sheaf of rings S, and a sheaf of modules and another sheaf f on x we say that f is a sheaf of modules for s if each f of u is an s of u module and the module structure is compatible with the restriction maps. That is, this diagram commutes. So for example, so for example, If we denote the sheaf of smooth functions, on a smooth manifold, x by O x smooth and the sheaf of continuous functions by OX continuous, then OX continuous is a sheaf of OX smooth. Modules. Similarly, if we take a complex manifold, if X is a complex manifold, then OX smooth is a sheaf of OX holomorphic modules. Now something which we had already seen, so as a, conse a consequence of what we had already seen, let E to X be a vector bundle, a smooth vector bundle. Uh, okay, so first, first of all, then the sections. Of pi forms a sheaf of vector spaces. So this is an easy check, which I leave it to you as an exercise. And moreover, this is a consequence of what we had seen. This is a sheaf of modules. Sorry. This is a sheaf of OX smooth modules. That's because uh, if 
this is what we had seen before if f is a smooth function on u and s is a smooth section of e over u then there is a smooth section f times s so there is something which we had checked earlier and uh, this module structure is easily checked to be compatible with restriction with the restriction maps okay so next we want to define what is a map between two sheaves so let s1 and s2 be two sheaves on x on x a map of sheaves phi from s1 to s2 is a collection of maps phi sub u from s1 of u to s2 of u such that these are compatible with the restriction maps the diagram commutes when uh, so here of course v is contained in u is an open set and this is the restriction map of s1 and this is the restriction map of s2 so let me give two exercises Uh, suppose S is a sheaf on X. Let U be an open set in X. Then S restricted to U is a sheaf. on you. So basically this exercise is what is this sheaf? Define this sheaf f s restricted to you. And the second exercise is suppose we have an open cover be an open cover. Let S and F be two sheaves. On X, suppose for each I, we are given maps of sheaves. phi sub i 
So this is a map of sheets from S restricted to UI to F restricted to UI. This is a map of sheaves on UI such that on UI intersection UJ phi i restricted to UI intersection UJ these maps agree on the intersections so then then show that we get a map phi of sheaves sheaves on x 